Finding the right balance when on the go between sound quality and ergonomics is a chore. It's the holy grail looking for that fine balance, that convenience. At times we find we reach for the things that sound worse. That sound, <laughs> I thought me was that. <laughs> <laughs> that sound worse just for the sake of convenience. But I am glad to say a product has landed for review that mitigates a lot of these issues. Welcome to the IFI Go Blue review. I would like to extend a massive thank you to IFI for sending this unit in for review. It's very, very much appreciated. And thank you for the quick response when communicating in regards to this unit. So, you pay your money, $200, you get a basic box like this, very light, very Apple-esque, nice outer shell, it's fine, we get rid of that, a lid, some instruction manuals, all very simple and straightforward. And nestled inside this foam placement, we get the IFI Go Blue itself. Let's take that out and place it here for now. And there is a compartment here that hides a small pouch that feels like it's made of beaver skin. Cheek test. Yep, yeah, very soft and very smooth. That's very handy if you want to keep it in there and actually not get it scratched. A basic USB-C cable and some salt for your chips. Do not eat this. So, omit the box. We no longer need this. Fantastic. Simple presentation, straight and to the point. USB cable, you've seen this a million times before. I can go over there. This pouch has got a drawstring. You could, let's see if it fits in there. It's nice and snug, snugly. Yes, it does. This will fit nicely in your tiny jean pocket that nobody knows what to do with. Who would have known in 1918 that 100 years later, it would be used for an IFI Go Blue. Um, so this is the unit. It weighs 26 grams. It's very light. Taking, let's see, this unit, the ES100 for size in comparison, they're almost identical, give or take half a millimeter. The IFI Go Blue, I think it's half a millimeter thinner, but otherwise they're pretty much identical. I will be referencing the ES100 here and the Apple Lightning dongle and USB-C dongle, which are pretty much the same thing with a different connector in a bit during the sound section. But for now, let's take a hardware tour around this really pretty little unit. It's really beautifully designed. It's soft plastic. I'm not sure how durable this plastic is, but for now, obviously it's brand new. It's holding up perfectly fine. Underneath the unit, we have a USB-C charging port. Thank you for emitting the micro USB debacle. Fantastic stuff. We're in 2022, finally. We have a reset button in case you have a software issue with this little unit. And then coming to the left hand side of the unit, depending on how you're facing, is the power button. This power button also doubles up as an indicator by double tapping, giving you a beautiful female voice declaring what codec you're connected to. So somebody like myself who can't see, absolutely genius. So Aptex, Aptex HD, Aptex HD Adaptive, AAC, she will tell you in a very, 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 very sweet voice. It's actually really nice. It's, I'm surprised it's not robotic or anything like that. So going to the top of the unit, we have the single-ended 3.5 out, the 4.4 Pentacon balanced, then going to the right hand side of the unit, we have this incredible analog digital crown, exactly like an Apple watch or a Swiss watch. Listen to the clicks. It's ingenious design for volume control on a little unit like this. The ES100 uh, has got a separate volume control, which is fantastic, but that compared to this, ah, night and day, night and day. Uh, and then we have a multifunctional button. I think this is made of aluminium. Uh, single tap for play and pause, obviously. Double tap for skipping, triple tap for skipping back, holding for your assistant, whatever it might be, Siri or Google. Ooh, I think some people even use Alexa. Um, then we have an interesting button beneath it. This button adds 
X bass, so basically a bass boost, we will get onto that in the sound section, X space, which gives you a broader sound stage, ditto, and both at the same time or off. And that is pretty much the unit, hardware-wise. Beautifully designed, very small, very compact, and very, very pocketable if I had an inside pocket. I don't. Okay, so that's the hardware. Let's get on to internals. The engineers over at IFI have separated the Bluetooth, the DAC module, and the amplifier module into different sections, like you would get on a very high-end DAC like the hollow behind me. Absolutely shocking for a start. The Bluetooth is the latest from Qualcomm, the quad-core QCC5100, which covers Bluetooth 5.1 and all the codecs under the sun. Aptex HD, Aptex HD Adaptive, AAC, LDAC, and the list is endless. I'll throw it on screen. Not only this, but this unit can update its software over the air so that further codecs down the line can be upgraded, basically future-proofing. Wonderful. For the DAC behind this little unit is the Sears Logic 32-bit upsample module. In this little unit is a dual mono architecture, which you don't see in little tiny dongles like this. They have literally gone all out on this little unit. Power-wise, you're looking at 245 milliwatts for the balance, and the power output for the single-ended is at 165 milliwatts. So quite a lot of juice. Um, the output stage on this little unit puts out 5.6 volts, which is absolutely <laughs> remarkable for this little unit. It's ridiculous. You're pretty much covered for on the go for the things that this little unit is actually designed for. And then you get far more than you expected. There's a reason why a $3,000 Stellia closed back is on the table. LCD XC is on the table. The Shure S12 is on the table. My word, you need to check out that review because with this unit is magic. And also the Shure EJ07M as well. The boys are out to play. Single to noise ratio, we're looking at 111 and 116 dB for the single ended and balanced and dynamic range is 130 dB. So this thing is actually pretty incredible. That takes care of the housekeeping. Information that can be read elsewhere and you don't need me to regurgitate it to you. What you're here for is to see what this can drive, how it sounds, and should it be in your pocket. Let's take one of those things at a time. Starting with an overall sound. The sound characteristics of the IFI Go Blue is sweet, neither bright nor dark, very much akin to the Syncsa SA1 desktop amplifier tonality, except it's a little bit less soft. It's absolutely remarkable. I love this little unit for its sound. Not only that, but it has the power and the chops to drive low end. It's got current, it's got lots of current for things like the Focal Stellia. The synergy between these two create the best Bluetooth experience on the planet. So much so that I had my buddy Skedra over a Viking weave to create a short on the neck cable so that this IFI Go Blue can sit inside here like this. Turning it, I think we lost it. Bruh. <laughs> for ergonomics or on the back of the neck. I can't wait till that cable arrives, but due to Royal Mail being a complete ass, unfortunately it hasn't arrived yet. So I can't show you here on camera, but when it does, expect to see it in other reviews. With a $3,000 Focal Stellia, it's absolutely incredible. That is if you own one of those, but most likely you will be running IEMs with this. I'll be breaking down the experience with these two specific headphones in a little bit. Getting back to the sound, you've got excellent stage, neither too big nor too small. 
I would say it's bigger than the ES100, bigger than the Apple dongles, bigger than the Qdelex, but obviously not approaching desktop amplifiers, but it's actually very good. Imaging is excellent and you get a fantastic experience for on the go because you're not analytical listening. That's the thing. This provides the convenience going from your couch, when your missus calls you, going upstairs, doing the housework, doing something that they're calling you for, running into the garden, mowing the lawn, or just running to the shops and you need something quick, small, and sounds excellent and doesn't compromise, and it delivers. So, then this unit has something special. X bass, basically a bass boost. Up to now, the only bass boost I've ever enjoyed has been on the Oppo HA2SE, a fantastic amplifier DAC combo for on the go. Unfortunately, Oppo went out of business in regards to audio and those are collector's items now and I'm very sad I sold mine. Still some of the best looking portable amp DACs I have ever come across. This unit, the X bass, increases the bass region in the sub bass. And it does it via analog, I believe. It's absolutely magic. It sounds so addictive. You know you shouldn't be touching it if you're a reference listener. But I'm telling you, the amount of times I've had it on, on the Focal Stellia, has been more than both hands and both feet, to be fair. It increases the sub bass region between 30 and 60 hertz to my ears. And for some headphones that require it, it's absolutely phenomenal. Really impressed with the X bass on this unit. I just love the implementation and I do actually use it. The next function by pressing the button again is X space. This one broadens the stage, widens the stage, deepens the stage, or so is the theory. For me personally, it feels like the bass region drops a little bit uh, and the treble region gets extended so you get a bit more detail and air and it feels like it's actually really opening up. Um, it really can fool you when you don't listen carefully. But because of that slight treble boost that I specifically, personally and subjectively, I'm sensitive to, I don't ever really use it. Um, but you can combine it with a bass boost. That's an interesting one. You would expect in that situation for it not to work because sometimes when you drop the bass region, stage does open up depending on the drivers of the headphone. But in this case, you do get the bass and you do get that air and sense of space. It actually does work really well. But still, because there is something happening in the treble region, subjectively for me personally, it hurts my ears and I don't turn the X space on. But I've had a lot of accounts of people actually do using it, especially on narrow staged IEMs or headphones, and they really do like it. So it's there, it's part of the dongle if you want it, which is absolutely fantastic. The more options we get, the better really. Battery life on this little unit is actually very good. It touts around 10 hours, but it really does depend on how hard you're driving it and the volume and stuff. But as a rule, I usually get about six and a half, seven hours because I do drive Stellias with it as my main use case. And that is a closed back over ear headphone at I believe 35 ohms, if I remember from the review, I think it might be. So this putting out 245 milliwatts at 32 ohms, um, yes definitely provides the juice and the power, so it's fantastic. But let's break down the frequency response. Bass region on this little unit is actually pretty well controlled. It doesn't roll off too quickly. Providing enough sub bass for something like a Stelia um, doesn't feel overly compromised for a little Bluetooth dongle that does 24 bit 48 or 24 bit 96 with LDAC. The bass control is pretty good. It goes quite low and, and due to the output stage on this little unit, you've got fantastic control in the sub bass. Mid bass is rather punchy, articulate, forward slightly and 
very well defined. So for EDM genres and things like that, this definitely does bring the thunder with the Focal Stellias. Uh, climbing up to the upper bass region, I am very, very, very pleased to say this little unit keeps its tonality from the sub bass all the way up to the treble region. It's got perfect tonal balance. So the upper bass region does not change tone or be overly exaggerated bleeding into the lower mid-range. It actually stays very consistent and rises quite steadily. It's very nice. There is quite good body there so that it helps the treble region. So when you get the attacks of tom-toms and horns and things like that, it never sounds really thin um, and it does provide enough power to actually drive the bass region very, very well. Between the S12s, which has thunderous bass, very well controlled, it sounds fantastic. And obviously the Focal Stellius. There's a reason why I've not mentioned the LCD XC yet. Going up to the mid-range, mid-range is not really either forward or back. I would say it's very neutral, um, warm sounding, lush. Vocals have good presence, excellent presence in fact. It sounds pretty realistic. And we're talking about a little Bluetooth dongle. It sounds pretty realistic. When I use this little unit, I never think I'm using a Bluetooth dongle. I, in fact, it just disappears into the background. And that is its magic. It delivers without you having to think about it or throwing things in your face. So going up to the mid-mids, a smooth rise, well-textured, well-defined. Instruments have nice body in this region. Uh, it is a bit forward and intimate um, and no harshness, no honking characteristics or crunchiness. Um, there are some funny little things about this unit that I'll bring up a little bit later about how it changes sound wise. The longer you have it left on, which is rather odd, um, the ES100 has that characteristics too. I just don't expect it in these little Bluetooth dongles. So uh, the mid range is rather nice, it's rather pleasant. You'll not really miss anything to be honest with you. Climbing up to the upper mid range, this is where I personally have trouble if it's forward or if it's too, too back, leaving a massive hole in the frequency response. Unfortunately, this doesn't. This is very smooth. Um, there is good articulation when singers sing like ch, s, f, some of those who obviously fall into the treble region, but uh, in the upper mid range upwards, it's very smooth. It's very, very nice. Um, the treble region, again, nicely detailed, very well articulated. But remember, you are using Bluetooth after all. So if you're expecting beautiful timbre and tonal balance and performance of a benchmark DAC3 or holo audio behind me, uh, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. But for a Bluetooth dongle, it's actually very, very good. It does beat out the ES100 here. Let's just bring it onto the table and the Apple dongles by a very, very large margin. Listening to jazz and classical music on this little dongle, you get nice string textures from violins. You get nice string plucks from bass region, from bass guitars or just bass in general. It's actually pretty nice. It's a nice sounding safe sounding, sweet sounding, well temperatured tonal balance. Very, very, very pleased with it. In fact, my first unit had issues and had to go back and this unit was a replacement and in the time it was gone, I kept trying to reach for it and it wasn't here. Um, we will bring some of those issues up that I had with it uh, in the caveat section, but Fortunately, in this unit, it's completely omitted and this is running absolutely perfectly. Very, very happy about that. Staging, like I stated in the beginning, is actually neither intimate nor too huge. It's, it's an, it strikes a very nice balance between its depth, its width, and occasionally its height. Instruments have a good sense of space around them. There is actually nice atmosphere between the instruments itself, so it doesn't sound like a void instrument void instrument it's very very well articulated you do get the sense of the room that the instruments are playing um, and it's neither too big nor too large and for on the go absolutely fantastic and i'm talking about this on a focal stellia by the way 
The synergy between these two is absolutely magic. Imogen is excellent. Um, shockingly good, actually. Uh, definitely beating out the ES100 and the Qdelex. It's very, very well defined. It doesn't blur as it crosses the stage. You get a nice scope around your head if your headphones or IEMs have got the driver capability to articulate this, it's actually pretty excellent. Tamba for vocals is superb. Vocals really does stand out on this thing. It's really well tuned actually in the bass, mids and the treble region of the vocals for males and females. They do have a tendency to go forward and come back. It seems to be excellent across the board, except in that treble region where it sounds a bit Bluetooth-esque, you know? Uh, sometimes cymbals do sound a bit crunchy and stuff, but that's to be expected. But that's only if you're doing analytical listening and not just running around like I've been using it. For that, it's absolutely brilliant. So the sound characteristics of this unit is what truly stands out. It's what's special about it, I believe, quite honestly. At this price point, IFI Go Blue right now is actually king. So much so that once this review is completed, I will reach out to IFI and ask to buy this unit off of them and pay with my own money because it is the gold standard for me here. Because the next step up from this for Bluetooth specifically, the best implementation I've ever heard has been in the poor 6000 from Low 2 at £1,200. Nothing in between from the FIO M11 Pro and everything else I've heard has even come close. So it's basically this as it stands and then jumping up to the low two poor 6000. For Bluetooth connectivity and sound quality via Bluetooth, it's superb. Absolutely love it. So we have been touching on the compatibility with headphones, but let's dive in properly now. Uh, with the LCD XC, if you fancy taking this unit and then taking your LCD XCs into the garden maybe, or into a park, but you don't wanna really carry any more than that huge mammoth of a headphone. Uh, this does power it quite well in the mid-range, uh, but for some reason, the current is not quite there for the sub-bass region and the bass region. Um, it's definitely more articulate and more well-performing on the Focal Stellias. Um, the LCD XC does seem to require a proper desktop chain to actually get the thunder in the sub-bass and the rumble. But the mid-range and the treble and stuff is not too bad at all. It doesn't throw the frequency response out of whack. It doesn't become overly sharp um, because it can't power the specific frequencies that the song is asking for. It's, it's a good experience it's not the best experience. Moving on to the Focal Stellia, it is absolutely magic. Um, the synergy between these two is incredible. I have been using it bar the short time that my first module went away and had to be replaced. Um, the Focal Stellia has been my main headphone on the go with this unit. It, the synergy is spectacular from the sub bass all the way up to the treble region. It's absolutely shocking. The next one I would say is this. Check out the review up here if it's been released already. I think it will be before this unit. This is the Lidshaw S12, a $149 planar IEM game changer for the industry. It is the best IEM under $1,000, hands down, absolutely spectacular. And with this little unit, IFI Go Blue, that will come to $350, I think. For that, it will beat the HD6XX, it will beat the Sandaras, It'll be all the other headphones people literally reach for if you don't mind IEMs. The bass on those IEMs is spectacular. So check out the review if you're interested and definitely let me know in the comment section if you have it and if you have it with the IFI Go Blue and what's been your experience. Um, let's start a discussion down there and let me know. On the EJ07M, from Litshore as well. Uh, this is a good experience. It's an overly smooth experience, but that IEM requires serious current. I had it on the ore behind me, sent via Mimic. Thank you, mate. I really do appreciate it for the review. Uh, Mimic Cables is a dealer in Benchmark, or Focal, Odyssey, Deconi, Fastex, 
everything under the sun. So if you are interested in any of these equipment you see around the studio, reach out to him and he will do you a fantastic deal, I'm sure, and he will look after you. He is an absolute gent. And thank you so much for sending the stack behind me. I really do appreciate it for the review. So going to mid gain on that stack for the EJ is where you get the best, best quality of sound from that IEM. So something little like this, is obviously not going to cut it, but it's pretty good. It's not too bad. It's enough to get by running to the shops or to the park. I alluded to some caveats in the beginning of the video. Let us dive into this now. So my first unit arrived and within the first week, I realized I was having some issues and my issues derived of the insert button inside here flying out occasionally. Pushing it like this, pulling it would never come out. But for some reason, randomly, when you press the button, when you weren't expecting it, that little tiny aluminium button inside there would pop out. And once it happened the first time, that fear never went away. And I had to always keep it in the little pouch or keep it in my pocket just in case it fell out. And that caused some anxiety because it's a $200 unit and you don't want that to go missing. Because if that goes missing, you can't, use any of the controls, play, pause, fast forward, etc. And uh, so that was the issue. And then I was having some software issue where if the battery died, the unit would shut down completely. The only way to remedy that problem was by resetting via the button underneath or the X space and power button together. That was a bit irksome. And because obviously I'm visually impaired, I use a screen reader. Uh, when music was playing, Music was fine and screen reader was working perfectly. This is a very niche problem for me specifically. But as soon as the, I pause the music, uh, the voiceover from my iPhone would disappear and would take 10 seconds, 15 seconds to come back and I didn't understand why. Um, so I reached out to IFI, they responded immediately, asked for that unit to be sent back and they sent me this replacement for the re review uh, and this one's been perfect none of the software issues none of the hardware issues i think there might have been a problem with the first batch of units um, and um, some problems in regards to manufacturing um, because some of my boys in the audio lounge telegram private chat get issues such as these or the hot takes on the fly all the information is down below. Um, that I was told that some people had two replacement units. Uh, I was told that some people's units had died. I don't think it had died. I think it might have been the issue I was experiencing with a battery. Basically when the unit died, it wouldn't come back on. So therefore it would look like it was dead unless you res reset it. And then there were some other units that actually truly died and some cutouts in the channels and stuff. So I think there might have been some hiccups in the first batch of units. Um, and I experienced some of those problems myself. But this replacement unit has been perfectly fine. And a couple of the other boys in the chats who have it have had no issues as well. So um, hopefully that's been remedied in the new batch and everybody's experiencing the experience I've had with this second unit, which has been absolutely stellar. Um, and like I stated, it's the gold standard for the $200 range Bluetooth connectivity compared to the ES100, Qdelix and all that kind of stuff. If you want something straight and on the go, it's absolutely fantastic. So, but we'll only see that situation resolving itself with time and we will come back to it if there is an issue at a later date because this will be sticking around the studio because it sounds so absolutely incredible. So for a little Bluetooth dongle that you can take everywhere with you, that sounds absolutely fantastic that drives Stellia very well, perfect synergy, such as thing as the Shure S12s. Uh, my Mad24 and Mad16 Customs will be coming back from Ambient Acoustics. It's been made right now. I can't wait to bring you those reviews of Customs. So if you are interested in those 24 balanced armatures, no crossover, you know what to do with the subscribe button and the notification icon. Kick it, punch it, and tell it I sent you. It's time to give this unit the Convince Me Audio Tiger scores. For sound quality, I will give this four Tigers out of five instantly. For the design and ergonomics, I would give this unit four Tigers out of five instantaneously. But for the QC issue 
of this unit. I am hesitant to give a tiger because I was so worried about that button going missing. I was very impressed by the quick response of IFI and the fact that they said they're looking into it and by the quick response of re-delivering a new one and some of our boys have had replacements, uh, absolutely no issues as well. So for the communication with IFI, I give three strong tigers. QC obviously can happen occasionally, no tigers there. It's a $200 unit and people can get worried, you know? For some people, $200 is a hell of a lot of money. So, that's a lot of tigers, that's a lot of uh, scenarios. So let's give a final score of this unit. The way this unit has been running specifically, and hopefully with a bit of luck, they will all be running like this from now on, the IFI Go Blue gets three solid tigers from Convince Me Audio. Absolutely brilliant. This will be here to stay. And if you want one of these, Check out all the information that will be down below to grab one of these for yourself. And also in the comment section, let me know what your experience has been with the IFI Go Blue. Has it been fantastic? Have you had problems? How has it been dealt with? Let's start a discussion down there too. I'm Kojicio. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.